the time um, we got to the 60s and 70s, they were fortifying it with minerals as well as vitamins. We've had to add vitamins and minerals to it in order to deal with with malnutrition. The whole idea of fortification is we've taken out the bran and the germ and so we're going to put these vitamins back in to replace them. Uh, they can hardly replace what we've taken out. The whole biological system has a natural way of working where when nutrients are present, they're present in context and the context is everything else that's in that nutrient. Where are they getting these minerals from and where are they getting these vitamins from? They're not getting them from food sources, they're actually getting them from chemical laboratories or mining them from the ground. Ansel Keys was instrumental in the sequence of events that led to us eating more and more wheat. Uh, Ansel Keys proved to be the harbinger of a, of a major global uh, indication that fat was to be demonized and that fat was responsible for just about everything bad you can imagine in the world. He reached the conclusion that it was the drop in the consumption of butter and eggs that was associated with the drop in cardiac mortality. He went to 21 countries, but only seven of those countries actually proved his theory that fat caused heart disease. He fabricated the story, really, about the relationship between cholesterol and, and heart disease um, by, by selecting nations that fit on his curve and throwing away all the rest. And it's amazing that, that his chart had so much impact on how we were told to eat. That same data could be examined and has been examined by other scientists to say it was the drop in sugar consumption that occurred at the same time that was associated with the drop in cardiovascular mortality. Fast forward to the present and the children are getting extruded cereal, you know, Cheerios, skim milk, sugar, uh, margarine, vegetable oils. There's nothing in that breakfast to nourish any part of the body. This was the beginning of fat being bad and carbohydrates being good. And this was the beginning of the end of bacon and eggs for breakfast and the beginning of breakfast cereals just soaring through the ranks of the favourite breakfast for the modern American household. 